Amen. How are you this morning? Okay. Who forgot to do the clocks? Anybody? Nobody set the, everybody, everybody remembered? We're good? I don't know. I saw some people walking in halfway through. I saw some. <laughs> what? No, no, I came in at 10 after. You can't trick me. Man, I got, I got a weird question. Say, well, that's all right, you're weird. Now, this is going to sound really weird, and I, maybe I'm just off my rocker, and, you know, and, and just, but sometimes thoughts go through your head, and you don't know if it's your thoughts or God's thoughts. How many of you ever experienced that? Then you're like, okay, I got to try to figure this out. Is this God? Or is this Jim? And many know God's is much better than Jim's. But here's the question. Okay, how, how many of you know, like, how, how many know gas has just gone wild? Right? Boy, aren't you glad to be paying $4.50 for, for a gallon of gas? What? <laughs> but yeah, this, this, is, this is what went through my mind. And, and so if, what I need is I need you to be honest with me. But if there's, is, there, is there somebody here that you came to church today in spite of the fact that you're worried of how you're going to get to work tomorrow because your car doesn't have enough gas and you don't have the money to put in it? If, if, if that's, again, it could be just me. It could be just me crazy. But if that's you, except you, Zeph, don't do it and try. <laughs> if, 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 do me a favor. If that's you, raise your hand. No? Nobody? Must be me. Okay. Because, Jeff, are you coming up here? I know you're kidding me. I tell you, right now, God's going to meet your need if that's you. No? I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. If you're just too shy to put your hand up, you come see me afterwards. We'll make sure you get to work tomorrow. Amen? I want to mention a couple of things. Um, um, Easter Sunday, I'm going to ask you now, I'll mention it each week. I want you to prepare. Last year we did a special offering for the Kenya Project, and uh, it was a great day and we had a great time. We're doing a special offering this year, but we're going to be... Well, I don't want to say selfish, that'd be the wrong term. But we're going to do some things. We want to do some things in this place that we want to take an offering, receive an offering. We want to put new flooring in the education wing. Um, and so we'll be calling on somebody to help us do that <laughs> physically. But we, when we built that in 2018, you know, remember the story of how we operated by faith, right, Randy, and all that? And when we got to the place of finishing it, we kind of put a, I'll call it a rent a floor for a season in, all right? It was fun, it was colorful, but we want to put some nicer flooring in now that's needed from a number of perspectives. And so we're going to do that. We have some lighting issues we want to take care of in the multi-purpose facility. We've got a number of things that we want to do in the house. And let me know that just like at home, you have to do things on your house. We got to do some things in this house, all right? And so we're going to ask you to prepare. We're going to receive an offering. Um, we're looking to raise about $30,000 to put around the building. If you would just prepare your hearts to give, I, listen, we've never come to this church body and asked you to give that you haven't given, all right? And so we appreciate it. We thank you. And uh, so we'll do that on Easter. Um, all right. That being said, grab your Bibles. How many of you ever don't like you? One person, Jen. The rest of you are just in love with yourself. Uh, uh, Dawn, you put your hand up? No, no, Dawn. You're very, Dawn, you're the nice one of the two. Okay? All right. But how many of you have ever just like, I mean, I just, you know, here's, here's the fact. Sometimes you just say, you know what? On one hand, I'm this. On one hand, I'm that. On one hand, I'm this. On one hand, I'm that. How many of you ever go through that? Right? That, that you know that you are not the model of perfection. Right? Yeah, and all of that, right? And, and you know, how many of you know that the wonderful thing about Scripture is, while it reveals a perfect God, it also reveals how God deals with imperfect people, right? And uh, so oftentimes I love to look at the Scripture and reflect on it, and Hebrews chapter 11 is such a fun passage. It, it is such a fun passage. We call it the, the heroes of faith, the faith passage. And I want to look at it this morning some, but the name of the message this morning is simply commend. It's commend. How many of you have ever been commended by somebody? Right? We got a few out here. <laughs> okay. I mean, Jamie raised his hand nice and high that time. But how many of you have ever had somebody just come up and say, man, I, 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 want, I approve of you. I commend you. Uh, blesses you. Like, isn't that fun? Thank you, George. 
Let me go over and see this side now. Listen, I don't, you, you set your clock ahead, and I know you're all awake, but are you really awake? Okay, I'm going to need you to catch up to the clock here this morning, all right? How many of you have ever commended somebody? Right? It, it's a good thing to be commended. You, you want to make your children purr? Commend them. Tell them how awesome they are. Tell them how great they are. Don't spend all your time telling them everything they've always done wrong. Right? I mean, you got to do that too. Right? Tell them how great they are. Like, for example, Tony is such an awesome person. She gets it from me. <laughs> Smile. She's loving. She's kind. She's a hard worker. Those are all commendable things. Right? Gets it from her mother and her grandmother. It's good to be. How many know God commends people? How many want to be commended by God? How many want to be approved of by God? You know how you're approved by God? The Bible tells me by faith. That's what the Bible tells me. Now faith, we know this, is the confidence in what we hope for, the assurance of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. This is what they were approved for. This is what they were approved of, that they won the approval. They won the commendation. They won the testimony of God. How many of you want to win the testimony of God? The commendation of God comes to people who have faith in God. All right? This is what the passage says. The passage is saying that God approved of and commended the ancients because of their faith. Hmm. Interesting. Now let's take a look at the next verse. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible, okay? So now, you and I live on an earth in a creation that was never seen until God spoke it into existence. Never seen until God spoke it into existence. He spoke something that no one ever seen. How many know that God can still breathe and birth things into your life that you've never seen? Hmm? Here's what this tells me. Our faith is in the God of creation, not the God of our creation. Do you know we have a way of creating our own God? How many of you know we can create God to our image sometimes? That we can create God according to our understanding. We can create God according to a denominational set of beliefs. We can create God to a set of dogma. We can create God. I mean, you know, there's a lot of created gods in the world. Even in Christianity, we can create a God of our own understanding, of our own intellect, of our own making, if you will. And yet, our faith is in the God of creation, not the God of our creation. And how many know, if you want to know who the God of creation is, aren't you grateful that you have a Bible? That you can actually look into the Word of God, that you can actually learn and see and read about who God is. Because it's the Scripture that reveals Him. It is the Scripture that reveals Him. It is the nature that reveals Him. I mean, you know that galaxies reveal Him. The stars reveal Him. That there's this revelation knowledge of the God of creation. And so listen to me this morning. I've got a question for you. Are you worshiping the God of creation or the God of your creation? Do you know there are things in your life that help create who you think God is? Do you know some think he's an angry tyrant because they had a father who was an angry tyrant? Do you know there's some who think that he'll never bring anything good into their life because they've had people who've never brought anything good into their life? That there's this, there's this creation of God based upon the circumstances and situations of your life. The circumstances and situations of your life do not create the God of your life. I mean, no, we do that, right? Yes, okay. Now, our faith is in the God of our creation, not the God of our creation. In other words, who formed you? Who shaped you? Who knit you together in your mother's womb? Who fearfully and wonderfully made you? Who made you in the image of God? How many know God did that? You see, what we have a tendency to do is now we have this version of ourself that's not consistent with what God made us. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. Before you were in your mother's womb, he knew you. You are not an accident this morning. You are a created being. I don't care how you were conceived. I'm talking about how you were created in your mother's womb. How you were conceived might not have been the best situation. 
but he's still the God of creation in the womb. Me and Craig are going to have a sermon back and forth. Come on, Craig, me and you will play. This is like you and me playing ping pong, tennis, something. You hit, I'll hit to you, you hit to me. We'll just leave the rest of them out. They can be spectators. Now, I want to talk about this. So, so understand that, first of all, to ha- you have to have a faith that's in the God of creation who created you, who created the earth, and yet also this faith in the God who redeemed you because how many know that you were created even though you were created? How many know you were still sinful? Anybody sinful here today? Anybody ever sinned here today? How many know you were in need of redemption? I got, you have to have faith in a God who loves you so much he chose to redeem you that you were bought with a price. That he's the one who paid for it. He's the one who purchased you. He's the one who sent his son for you. How many know that will inspire faith? All right, you have faith in the God who called you. How many know we're all called by God? How many know we're all called to salvation? All men are called to be saved. All men are called by God, right? He's not willing that any should perish. And so this faith is in this God of creation, this God who created us, this God who redeemed us, this God who calls us to a heavenly calling. That's who our faith is in. This is faith. It's faith in the God who loves you. Hmm. Hmm. Think about that for a moment. How many know love? And faith go hand in hand. Love and faith go hand in hand. Love is fuel for faith. Why? Okay. All right. I got a question. How long have you been married? 220 years. Okay, now. Close. Okay. 50. It's 50, isn't it? Us and Disney. Us and Disney. That's right. You were at Disney for your 50th anniversary. They established in 71 and so did we. <laughs> they both established in 71, Disney and their marriage. And it's been an amusement park ride ever since hasn't been wrong. <laughs> I love to watch the two of them. It's just the greatest expression in the world, okay? How many know worship isn't about doing all the same things, right? Okay, so, so if you get into worship, here, here's Bonnie. She's up here. She's worshiping. She's shouting. She's jumping. She's saying all kinds of stuff. Give her a mic, and she goes buck nuts, all right? And Ron, he is just every bit as excited all the way through worship. <laughs> right? He's just as excited. He just ain't coming out the same way, is it? Right? Okay, enough of that. I, I, I saw that this morning. That blessed me. But here's my question to you. If Ron says to you, and don't think of the negative things, I'm going to do this for you. Do you have faith that he's going to do that? She, was, she hesitated a split second. I just want you to know. It depends. Okay. But Why? That's true, but why else? Faith. <laughs> he loves me. Oh, he loves me. right? He loves you. <laughs> see, see, when you are loved, don't you have a belief that that person who loves you is going to do what they say? Okay. Listen, here's what we know about God God loves us. And because he loves us, it's perfect, okay? God's unconditional, perfect love for us is fuel for our faith in him. This is what he said, I love you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. How many of you know when you start there, everything else is built upon the premise of love? Even your faith is built upon the premise of love. My God loves me enough that I know he's going to do what he said he's going to do. I have faith in him because of his love for me. Okay, I should, have been, I should have went with parents and kids, right? You love those little rascals, right? And so you do for them what? Out of your love. And they have a faith in you that you're going to do what you said you do. Many people have a low faith level because they have a low love level. When you understand the love of God, it will increase your faith level in God. No question. Because, see, 
You may have faith in the power of God, but sometimes you don't have faith in the character of God. Love is the character of God. God is love. And because God is love, I have faith in that God. You see, Hebrews chapter 11 is talking about faith, and it's, and, and it's faith in God, in faith in the God of creation, but it's also faith in God, not faith in self. Did you ever look at something and say, I can't do it? Like the overcomers in the house this morning, only one person. Do you just want me to say amen? I know what you want me to say. The second three favorite words of the house. You want me to say, come on, Lindsay. You have faith in God, not yourself. Paul said this. Look what Paul said to the Philippians. Paul said to the Philippians, for it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his spirit, who boast in Jesus, who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. I was circumcised on the eighth day. I'm the people of Israel. I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. I'm, in regard to the law, I was a Pharisee. As for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness, based on law, I was faultless. Paul said, look, if you're going to start putting things upon your faith, uh, faith upon your flesh, if you're going to start having faith and boasting in yourself, I got more than all of you, right? And listen to me for a moment this morning. We have confidence this morning because of who God is, not because of who we are. I got no confidence in this guy. I got no faith in this guy. I got a whole lot of faith in that guy. That, that, that we got to understand something this morning. Many times, listen to me. It even, it, you, you, you can't get saved of yourself. Right? You can't get, you can't get, I mean, you can't get good enough to be saved. You, you can't. Then, then once you get saved, if you want to do things and God wants you to do things, all of a sudden you find yourself saying, but I can't do that. Praise God, that's exactly where you need to be. That is exactly where you need to be. We have faith because of who God is, not because of who we are. It didn't matter that Paul was a Hebrew. It didn't matter that he was a Roman. It didn't matter who he was. It mattered who God was. We have confidence because of what God did, not because of what we did. Look at this chapter. This was not about the exploits of men. It's about the exploits of God through men. Faith in your flesh, faith in yourself, will steal from your faith in God. When you think it's about you, when you are putting, saying, well, I can't because, how many know that robs faith in God? It robs faith. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm not, uh, Moses tried it. I, I don't speak well. I stutter. How many know God didn't care that he stuttered? How many know God doesn't care about your, uh, your shortcomings? I mean, God doesn't care about what you can and can't do. He only cares what he can do through you. No, no, I don't want no amen. I'm going to sit here and preach like you. Faith in your flesh will hinder your faith in God. Because how many know God is not about to allow you to boast in your flesh? How does that look like back in my head? You see those five hairs I have left? Listen, if you're putting your faith in your flesh, it will hinder any faith that you can have in God. It's in the way. How many of you know you, you want to remove it? You know the Bible says to remove and, and, and to fix our eyes on Jesus? To take off every encumbrance? The sin that so easily entangles? The lack of faith? God can do more in a moment of faith than you can in a lifetime of yourself. In a moment of faith, he can do more than you could have done in 50 years. For for example, how many know Abraham had 100 years where he couldn't produce anything from his flesh? 100 years he couldn't produce a child. For 100 years he couldn't produce Isaac. But in a moment of time when God comes along and in a moment where God speaks to him by faith, and Abraham did what? Abraham believed God. Abraham what? He what? Yeah. 
He had faith. He believed God. In a moment, Sarah, his wife, 90 years, couldn't produce fruit from her womb. But God did it in a moment. How many know this morning that some of you have been toiling and spinning for year after year after year to try to produce something out of your flesh? And God says this morning, I can produce what you want in a moment if you'll just put your faith in me. Just a moment is all he needs. He needs a moment of faith. He needs a moment, a mustard seed size of faith. He doesn't need your flesh. He doesn't need you to operate in yourself. He doesn't need that. Imagine that, ladies. You get to have a baby at 90. Or 100, Jason. You can, you, scary thought, right? Look at this chapter, and you see men and women of this chapter who had no reason to have confidence in their flesh. Abraham, he was a nobody. He was, a, he was the son of an idol worshiper, living. And God comes and calls him, go to a place I'll show you. How I many know there was nothing in his flesh that caused God to call him? Moses, living on the backside of the desert, taking care of sheep because he murdered somebody in Egypt. Jacob, a lying, cheating, swindling. Go on and on through that list. Samson. <laughs> Which leads me to this next one. We've got faith in God. A perfect God, not a perfect person. If you are waiting for your perfection, for God to do something, you'll be waiting a long time. Imperfection does not give us an excuse to be imperfect, but neither does it give us an excuse to, put, to not put our faith in a perfect God. Have you seen this list? Yes, I have, Pastor. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Good to talk to you, too. Check it out. Come on. Look at this list. By faith, Abraham. How many know Abraham had a little bit of jacked up moments? Hmm? I mean, Jacob? God, by faith, Jacob? By faith, Jacob? The dude that came out of the womb hanging on to his brother because he's trying to usurp the birthright at that point? Jacob, the dude that tricked his elderly father into thinking he was his brother? Jacob, that guy? By faith, Jacob? By faith, David? David, the dude who danced before the ark with all of his might, and the next moment is sleeping with Bathsheba and killing her husband? David, by faith, Samson, have you read about him? You say, and what I'm saying to you this morning is, hey, we can be imperfect. No, no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is your imperfection does not give you excuse to not have faith in a perfect God. Right? I mean, we're... Listen to me, I don't know about you, but my God has never done a thing in my life because I'm perfect. I know it's hard to fathom. Right? Imperfection does not give us an excuse to be imperfect. Yeah, I already did that one. <laughs> the perfect person, listen to me for a moment, doesn't need a perfect God. But the imperfect person is reliant on a perfect God. When you got it all figured out and you're all perfect and you're all that, how I many know you don't need God, right? But when you know that you're imperfect and you know, how I many know Peter said, go away from me, Lord, I'm a wretched man. And there was a dependence upon his perfect God. We're talking about Peter who one moment has great revelations of God. The next moment, Jesus is saying, get behind me, Satan. We're talking about Peter who one moment is walking on the water, and the next moment he's operating in his flesh and cutting the dude's ear off. You know, that's kind of jacked up. Have you, I mean, I, I, there's some times where I feel really bad about me, but then I look at Scripture and say, well, I never cut an ear off. I'd like to cut heads off. 
I've never cut an ear. Hey, I, I'm, I'm, I, I've never killed a guy. I've never, aren't you milk to measure ourselves against each other sometimes? If Hebrews 11 gives us anything, it gives us hope that the perfect God of heaven and earth chose to use imperfect people on the earth. That's who my faith is in. You, you see, we've got to come. What, what's this message about? This message is about if you want to win the commend, commendation of God. How many of you want to be approved by God? How do I get approved by God? How do I get commendation from God? How do I get him to commend me? The Bible tells me, by faith, I receive the commendation of God. But we'd rather make a list, right? Okay, let me make my list. I'm checking it twice. Ah, right, okay. Set the clock ahead, praise God, check. Made it to church on time, check. Didn't kill the kids in a way, check, check, two checks. Raised my hands in worship, check. I didn't curse this morning, check. I had the right clothes on. Check. I listened to worship music. Check. I read my Bible. Check. How many of you like checklists? The problem is the checklist runs out and we're still wondering. I'm trying. Oh, yes, that one. Don't forget that one. Don't forget that one. That's a big check there. Yeah, I'm going to make that one really high. Right? Okay. I got that. Y'all wondering what it was, aren't you? Y'all wondering what it was, aren't you? I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. I might tell you. Listen to me. I'm going to ask you a question this morning. Who and where and what is your faith in? Who and where and what? Okay, let me say something to you this morning. How many know we're living in a topsy-turvy, crazy world? How many know it's just swirling every stinking day? How many know it's just like howling and the winds are blowing and there's all kinds of craziness going on? And we live in that time where it's just like, oh my gosh, what's tomorrow going to bring? What do we put our anchor on? What do we put our fix? I mean, you know, we put our faith in God. We put our faith in God, the God of creation, the God who created the heavens, the God who created the earth, the God who created the sons of men to inhabit the earth. That's who we put our faith in. The God who created you in the image of God. That's who we do it. Not the God of our creation, not the God we limit with our finite understanding. No, 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 no. We put our faith in the God we can't comprehend. We put our faith in the God we can't define totally. I can't define my God totally. And anybody here? Oh, I can tell you a lot about him, but I can't define him totally because he's an infinite God. He's far greater than my imagination. He's far greater than my understanding. He's far greater than my wisdom. He's far greater than my intellect. I will not demean him and bring him down to my creation. That's who we have our faith in. Where has the wonder and awe of our God gone? That he's who the one we have our faith in. We put our faith in God, not ourself. When you put your faith in God, you get beyond yourself. How many like to get beyond yourself? Thank you, Craig. The rest of you are just being stubborn. And I'm going to harass you till I'm done. Because harassment is my specialty. Can't preach, but I can harass. Oh, nice day. You finally woke up and nodded your head, Patty Bracken. <laughs> I can't preach, but I can harass. She looks like one of those things in the back of the car, one of those dogs that go like this when they're driving. Here's how the, it says this. These, chapter 11, were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. 
The commendation of heaven for men on the earth comes through faith. Comes through faith. The approval of God. Come on, Lindsay. You ain't said two words the whole sermon. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure it was a snore I heard earlier. And I said, come on, Lindsay. And she goes, woohoo. Hi, how are you? We sometimes try to win the commendation from God through a lot of things. Works. How many know works are important? How many know works are evidence of faith? Yeah. What we do for the kingdom and what we do for Christ is an evidence of faith in Christ. James says, I'll show you my faith by my works. How many want to be commended and approved of by God? And how do I get that? How do I get that approval? Is that I did great exploits in his name? How many know there are no great exploits in his name without faith? Is it by giving enough? Is it by doing enough? Is it by not doing enough of the bad things? How do I get that approval? How do I get God to testify about me? This is what the ancients were commended for. This is what the ancients were approved for. This is what they were approved of. Again, look at the list of people. Look at the list. I would say this morning that there are some in the room that you've created a narrative of who God is on false information. One of the things that we see going on in our world all the time is a narrative being spun based upon false information to create a story. Some have allowed the formulation of God in their mind to come from life events, things that were done to them, things that parents have done, things that siblings have done, things that pastors have done. And there's this creation of God in your mind. And yet God wants to unwrap that and he wants you to put your faith in the God of creation, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the God who did knit you together in your mother's womb. The God the Bible says fearfully and wonderfully made you. The God who has a purpose for your life. The God who redeemed you. The God who loves you. The unconditional loving Father. The good, good Father we talk about in Scripture. The author of your faith. The finisher of your faith. That is who our faith is in today. Allow God to reveal the God of creation to you. Not the God that a denomination has taught you. Not the God that religion has taught you. Not the God that the world has taught you. How many of you ever heard this? Well, if God this, then how come that? They're trying to define God's not good when the Bible tells us that God is good. He's all good. He's omnibenevolent. He's all good. And yet, this morning, there are others that your faith has been, or lack of faith has been because of yourself. Because of yourself. You have no confidence in your flesh. You have no confidence. You've been beat down like a dog your whole life. Critical words, negative thoughts, words of mothers, words of fathers. They have hammered you and hammered you and hammered you and hammered you. And you can't get past that. God never meant those words for you. God never intended those words for you. The Bible tells me that God sings over you. 
sings over you. Man, can you imagine God singing over you? Can you imagine me singing over you? And those negative thoughts, those negative words, that constant criticism. I, I talked to a lady not long ago, and for 39 years she's heard nothing but negative from her mother. She wished she was dead. That is not from God. That is from the pit of hell. But others, you, you, you want to do and believe God wants you to do, but you can't get past your inability. You can't get past what you see as your shortcoming. That I can't do it. You're like Moses. I can't do it, God. I don't speak well enough. I don't do this well enough. I don't do that well enough. He never called you to anything because of your ability. Who he calls, he equips. Who he calls, he'll give what they need. He didn't call Peter because he was the best of the best and the brightest of the brightest. He called him in spite of that. And I want to say to you this morning that there's times in your life where God will call you to do something in faith despite who you are, not because of who you are. Why? So that it's the all-surpassing power of God that is seen in your life. That people can say, I know that jacked up dude. That wasn't him. That was God. And then, for others, you related to that imperfect person. I've always said this my whole life, well, since I pastored. I get this wonderful opportunity to be a, to stand up and every week from an imperfect vessel preach about a perfect God. If I had to do it from being a perfect vessel, it would never happen. I don't point you to Jim. Everybody say, praise God. Thank you for being just as lack of, lack of energy as that as you were the rest. I was really waiting for a big shout. Praise God! Yeah. But you know your imperfection. How many know we know it well? And you know your shortcoming. You know it well. And then you allow it to become the thing that hinders you from faith in God. Imperfect people have a reliant faith on a perfect God. It forces you to be reliant on God. It drives you to that. <laughs> Moses, going back to Egypt, I need God. I mean, when, when, when one moment you're parting the, the Jordan, and the next moment you're smashing the Ten Commandments, it's a bad day. When one moment you're striking the rock in anger, and God's keeping you from the promised land, it's a bad day. But in the next moment, he has this faith in this God that enables him to bring the people to the threshold. Paul actually said he likes to boast in his weakness. Not because the weakness was good, but because it showed the power of God. Do you want the commendation from God? You want approval of God? You want the testimony of God? It comes by faith in God. Faith in him. Not faith in faith, faith in him. Now, let me say this. To even have a relationship with God requires faith. Forget about the things I do as a believer with faith in God. How do I become a believer? How do I even get to that place? How do I even get to the place where God can begin to work in through my life in these, in these moments of faith. I've got to come to a saving place. I've got to come to a relationship place. How do I do that? Here we go. Ready? You ready? Faith in God. Faith in Jesus. I become a child of God. I become a son of God by putting my faith in Jesus. Come on. Stand with me. Remind me, next time we do Clocks Ahead, everybody gets a Mountain Dew coming in the door. Close your eyes with me. Everybody close your eyes. 
not you, you're walking. Close your eyes. Here's what I want to do this morning. Before you can... Hebrews chapter 11 about all these men and women who had this relationship with God called by faith and called by God and they operated in faith. And yet this morning, I want to invite you to walk in faith, to be commended by God as a son, as a child of God, saved, redeemed, born anew from above, a new creation. You see, the Bible says that when I put up my faith in Jesus, the Bible says he's not ashamed to call me brother. I'm not ashamed to call me brother. How many of you have ever had a sibling you sometimes want to say, I wish that wasn't my brother or sister? <laughs> the Bible says that when I put my faith in Christ, the Bible says he's not ashamed to be my brother. There's a commendation that comes from God. That's my son. That's my child. That's my brother. And so this morning, I want to say to you, if you're in this house and you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ, you've never given your heart to him, you've never given your life to him, this commendation of God starts with sonship. The moment that you say, by faith, I put my trust in Jesus and what he did on Calvary. If you are going to do that today, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand that I, today, want to be saved. I want to be a child of God. I want to be a son of God. I want to be born anew from above. And it starts, ladies and gentlemen, with saying, I put my faith in what Jesus did at Calvary's cross. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I believe in my heart that he raised him from the dead. That wins the approval of God. Anybody at all? If you're watching on live stream, if you're watching on TV someday, listen to me. The first act of God testifying is the moment of salvation. Where he puts his spirit inside of us as a mark of ownership, as a mark of sonship. And you do that by starting with simply saying, Father, I accept the gift of your son, Jesus. Father, I accept the gift of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. I don't come in my own flesh. I don't come in my own understanding. I don't come in my goodness. I don't come in my perfection. I come through your son, Jesus. And you simply say, and I believe that he paid for my sins. I believe that you gave him for my redemption. I believe you raised him from the dead and I believe that he's Lord of my life. That's sonship. So here's the deal. You want the approval of God? Do you want the commendation of God? It comes from faith in God. He will testify about you. He will testify about you. He will commend you. You will be one of those that were commended for your faith. Get past your flesh. Get past the God of your own creation. Get past the God of your imperfection. So Father, today, would you bless your people? God, today, would you raise our faith level? God, today, would we be able to get our eyes off ourselves? Would we be able to get our eyes off each other? Would we be able to get our eyes upon you? Would we be able to put our faith in you? That by faith, we would be commended by God. That we would win the approval of God by faith. Thank you for who you are. Thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus and God's people said, amen. Have a great week.